Welcome back. This is our second video to create a Wordle game. Uh, in our first video, uh, we started with some basic steps to create an HTML page uh, to host the game and some CSS uh, for the presentation of that kind of game matrix. So let's uh, do a little bit of review here. And so here uh, on the screen, uh, is the HTML uh, with the game board, right? So we have a game board, uh, which is rendered uh, on the right side of the screen uh, as a kind of a, a, a green blue uh, box here. And uh, give me a second so that I can annotate uh, the screen. So on the HTML, we have a big uh, game board, right? So, so this is the game board that we create, and then inside the game board we have some rows and columns. So, uh, just for the sake of simulation, uh, we have uh, one row here, row one, and then we have row two, right? And then inside row one, we have columns. Uh, in the version of the, the Wordle that uh, we looked at, the uh, Wordle game has six rows and five columns. So basically we are going to guess five letters uh, for the word and that's why we have five columns in each row here okay so supposedly the game box uh, game board here is the big box uh, on the right side of the screen and then ultimately we are going to have rows okay uh, here right I uh, have a row here uh, that will be divided into uh, five columns or five letters uh, that um, the user will guess. Okay, and so they are going to enter uh, the letters in each box and to get the, the word. So this is the basic uh, template, uh, the starting point uh, for the Wordle game. Um, so in the CSS, and let me uh, go back uh, to the CSS and so in CSS uh, what we have here is uh, basically uh, to apply some background color and some gray color to the entire page and then for the game board remember uh, this div with ID equal to game board okay we can use an ID selector which starts with the hash and then the ID of the particular element, right? So hash game board, and it's case sensitive. So if you use lowercase, uh, be consistent with lowercase. Here I use capital, so I'm going to be consistent with the capitalization as well. Uh, but once you use hash, and then the ID of the element, uh, whatever CSS that you create inside the curly braces or curly brackets will be applied to that element with that particular ID. So here, the game board uh, dev. Okay. So in our first lesson, uh, we applied some background color. Okay. Uh, a height. Okay, which is six hundred pixels in this case, and then a width five hundred pixels. So that defines the dimensions, the size of the game board. Now in this lesson, I want to go further and apply some more CSS uh, on the rows and columns. And I would like to introduce a new uh, concept, which is a class selector that allows you to apply CSS to a number of elements. Um, if you have a group of elements uh, or divs or whatever uh, where you want to have 
a kind of a similar look and feel, then you can use this uh, class selector, assign all the elements to that class, and then the elements is going to inherit the same uh, CSS rules uh, from the same class. Okay, and in this case, we are going to apply some basic heights, you know, for uh, the columns and then uh, flex box uh, technique uh, to define how they are going to follow one another and how the layout will look like. And then ultimately, we'll also apply some background colors. So if we look at the Wordle game uh, from New York Times, the version here, uh, if you have a correct letter in the correct place, uh, it's going to highlight that letter uh, with the uh, green background color. And then if you have a match, like if the letter that you enter matches a letter in the word, but not in the correct place, it's going to be highlighted with the kind of an orange background. And then if it does not have, it does not hit any letter in the word, then it's just to be shown um, with the dark background as just a regular letter. Okay, so so we are going to use the example uh, words such as peace, P E A C E. Okay, and then perhaps to showcase uh, that how we can highlight certain letters if it's a if it's the correct letter and in the correct place, or you know the correct letter but not in uh, the correct spot, right? So we can uh, use. Uh, CSS uh, to change the colors um, to you know so that uh, we can uh, give this feedback uh, you know kind of information back to the user. So uh, going back to our uh, Wordle game and uh, the Wordle page, uh, let's get started uh, with um, what we would like to do here. So um, inside the game board, we're going to have rules, right? So uh, we have the div id equal to row one, div id equal to row two, okay. So in the um, you know because we're going to have multiple rows, okay. Instead of defining CSS for each row, we are going to group all these rows together, like assign all the rows to a class, and then create a class selector in CSS so that we can apply a set of CSS rule to all the elements belonging to the class. So we are going to add class equal to rule, okay, for rule one. And we can do the same thing, okay, class equal to rule for rule two as well, okay. And so in this case, we can actually change the behavior of the class row and and make the changes for all the different uh, rows for row one, row two, and, and so forth. Okay, so let's go back also to CSS and my CSS is down here. So I'm going to add a class selector uh, for the row class. Okay, so if you want to add a class selector in CSS, you start with the dot, just a little dot, even though it's very tiny, it makes a difference. It defines a class selector, follow, so dot followed by the name of the class, followed by again by a pair of curly braces or curly brackets. And inside the curly brackets, we are going to define the the CSS uh, for the raw. So for now, let's just make a very simple change, background color. Uh, perhaps we can uh, try some dark gray. Okay, so a dark gray color uh, for the raw. And also something we can do is that uh, we can also um, make a uh, change the height uh, for the row. So the row can be, you know, we're going to have 
100 pixel for each box so the row is about 100 maybe a little bit over 100 pixels but for now let's make it 100 px okay and so with that um, we can uh, refresh the page on the browser and you are going to see that the first uh, actually the first two rows is going to have um, certain height okay and in this case uh, is uh, it is 100 pixels for each row okay so we can continue from here now just to show you um, the um, that um, what you see at the top here the actual two rows let's apply as some background color uh, border color okay so I'm going to uh, add border and then one pixel solid uh, perhaps uh, we can use black okay uh, just to show that um, some black border color uh, for each row so that you can see that it's clearly uh, two rows so uh, save it and if you refresh you can see there are two rows uh, in here okay so these are the rows now for the columns right uh, we can follow the same technique because the columns are going to have some consistent uh, look and feel so we can also assign them to the same class such as call or column okay we can type it column or whatever name you like okay I would like to just call them column so I'm going to add class uh, column to all the divs inside the row Okay, uh, these are going to be the columns or boxes hosting uh, individual letters that the user will enter, will pick. Okay, so column, and now we're going back to the CSS. And let me pull this up a little bit. Okay, and we can use dot, again, dot starts a class selector, dot, dot column this is going to select all elements belonging to the column class so column one column two column three one two three four five five columns here they all belong to the column class so whatever we define here in CSS will be applied to all these five columns so that's uh, just for the sake of discussion let's apply some basic um, you know uh, uh, height and border color okay so that we will be able to show them okay so I'm going to uh, apply actually some width right so a hundred pixels for the for the width hundred pixels for the height right and then uh, some border color right one pixel uh, solid okay or if you like you can try something like dash or dotted okay and then perhaps a different color okay and we can try something like blue okay or whatever color you prefer okay so once we have done that uh, if we refresh it and as you can see here now it's there's a problem you see that uh, in the first row there are five columns but these five columns, instead of this being displayed as columns, they are displayed as rows. So how can we fix this? Okay, you can see one, two, three, four, five. Uh, five, you know, columns, but they are in fact uh, displayed as rows. So in this particular, um, you know, uh, tutorial, I'm going to rely on this flex box technique. And so uh, last time I also posted uh, the Flexbox uh, link, so Flex CSS, and which I open here. Uh, this is a very useful technique uh, for page layout uh, to determine how uh, the elements uh, will flow, you know, on the page. And so one, um, so if you want to uh, use Flexbox. Um, you need to you know 
change the display property of the CSF for the container uh, to be flex and then you can change the flex direction uh, by default uh, I think it's a column or um, you know um, a column uh, flex direction so um, so you see by default I, if I do nothing here uh, when I show the columns they are actually shown as one column and the, in the flex box uh, technique this is referred to as the flex direction column because they are all organized in one column instead in this uh, Wordle game we are going to make the columns in one row so the flex direction should be row okay so let's give it a try okay without uh, talking too much you know I think uh, when you see the effect you I hope it makes sense so again um, the row okay the row here contains all the columns and this is the container okay and we need to make sure that the display for the container is changed to flex that means we're going to use the flex box technique uh, for the display for the rendering of elements inside this con container okay so the row is the container and then the columns are the individual ones inside the container okay and then so in the uh, row we also need to change once we change it to flex let's also change flex direction to uh, row okay so columns will be display one up to another as one row okay so once we have done that let's refresh and immediately you see that the the columns are in 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 fact right now columns okay because the flex direction has been changed to row they are display or rendered in one row okay so so this is um the the um the flex box and uh, there's more we can talk about but for now i think uh here this is really the the key uh, for this particular world or game okay so for the container okay which is the row here change the display to flex and then change flex direction to row okay and so that will make sure the elements inside the row will be displayed as one row okay now let's start to put in some letters okay uh, into uh, each column and then we can see how we can uh, render them in different um, in different background colors or is there anything else we need to do to make sure that the look and feel is similar to the world or game that we've seen okay so um, so given that uh, the the correct letter is peace p-e-a-c-e -E, I'm going to kind of uh, put a, a similar letter uh, a word here P I E C E okay so and and we can take a look uh, how it renders okay when you see uh, the letters here um, it's not perfect yet so uh, there is some improvement we can do here first of all we want to make the, uh, the letters larger right and we also want to center uh, those letters uh, to the center right uh, of each box both both uh, horizontally and also vertically so vertically we also want to put it in the middle right so this font size we can change uh, maybe even font color okay so um, now let's take a look at the the wordle okay so word of the each letter is is very big okay almost as big as uh, as the box and then they are really center centered or in the middle of each box uh, perhaps we also would like to change it uh, the each box into to a uh, kind of a black 
uh, background and then change the uh, each letter to a light or like white uh, color okay so um, let's do it so um, first thing I would like to do in the column right because the column is where uh, the each letter is placed so we are going to change the uh, the color okay when we say color this is actually going to be the four color or the fun color and so we can change the color to white okay and then perhaps the background color we can change it to black okay just to make it simple um, if you save it you can always refresh to to give it a try okay so see it's uh, uh, re in the re reverse colors and now let's make the letters bigger so we can change the font size and there are different ways uh, to specify font size but one uh, common way is to use something like PT okay or if you want to use PX or other um, you know uh, measurement uh, you can use that as well but let's take a look how large 20 is okay I mean change it to 30 okay or whatever you like I will leave it at 30 pt for now okay um, I know this is not the perfect way uh, to structure all this because um, as some people probably will comment um, the the pixels are relative um, measurements so they are relative to the screen size and pts are absolute measurements so this is not the best way but just to showcase you know the different techniques here let's leave it there we can always improve uh, later okay so fun size 30 pt for now now the problem I see is that the letters are not at the center uh, nor is it in the middle of uh, vertically speaking so let's change it okay and there are so many different ways to do it um, in CSS and sometimes it can be confusing uh, because we are using the flexbox techniques here we're going to continue to use it so in the column let's continue to use uh, display flex okay so we're going to use flexbox and follow um, you know some uh, use some of the properties associated with the flexbox to render the ladder each ladder at the center and middle of the box okay so how can we put things uh, kind of at the center okay so as part of flex box you can use this justify content and then center okay and if you save and refresh you're going to see that they move uh, to the center horizontally now how do we align vertically okay uh, there is vertical align uh, it's a vertical align no actually there is a different let me, let me take a look I, I believe I just test it and uh, so um, yeah align items actually okay so align items center is going to align things in the middle okay this is especially useful if you have multiple lines so that's what I'm going to do okay so um, align items center okay and if we save and refresh right so things are in their proper positions okay so position wise I think uh, this is good now imagine you know in the game um, if the user has entered this P I E C E for the correct letter piece P E A C E so P is the correct letter in the correct position so is the last letter of E right so we need to mark these uh, letters with green background right whereas um, the other E here okay 
uh, even though it does appear in the word is not in the correct position so we need to mark it in the orange background color okay so depending on the situation we need to kind of change the letters background differently and so let's think about again you know you may have multiple letters uh, that are correct. You may have multiple letters that are in, you know, that are a match, okay, but not in the correct position. So, um, what I'm saying is that there are going to be multiple things that can use the same style, okay. And so, because we have introduced the concept of class selector, let's continue to use this concept here, okay. So, let's say, okay. I want to define a class called correct, okay? Meaning if a letter is in the correct position um, and also matches a letter in the actual word, okay? In that case, it's going to be marked as correct, okay? So we're going to define this doc correct, which is the class correct in CSS. And in this case, remember if it's correct, right? Both the correct letter and in the correct spot, we're going to change the background color to maybe something like a green, right? A green color, right? So if it's perfect, right? Correct position, correct letter, you know, green. Uh, if it's a match, okay? So uh, let's create a match class, dot match. If it's a match, meaning it matches a letter in the word but not in the correct spot, we want to change the background color to maybe something like orange, right? Two different background colors. Now, how do we apply the correct and match classes to each of the letters here? Now we can go back to the uh, columns right uh, that contain the words uh, the the letters right and so when you examine each letter so p is the correct letter so we can add a space up up to the column class and then add correct okay and then the same for c right correct and then the last e is also Correct. So the syntax here in HTML is that uh, you can have multiple classes in the class attribute. Okay. And whenever you want to add a new class, uh, just add a space and add the class. Okay. So let's save this. And if you refresh it, you're going to see that P, C, and E, three letters, are colored uh, in uh, the green background. Okay, how about E? E is a match, right? The E in the middle here. This is a match, but not in the correct spot. Okay, so uh, we already have created a match class, dark match with the orange background color. So what we can do is that we can add a match, okay? Next to column uh, for this letter E, okay? So once we have done that, save it refresh the page and the E is color in orange okay so um, this is to show you an example um, kind of in the combination of HTML and CSS okay so of course this is only kind of an example and we basically enter everything uh, hard code everything uh, in this uh, tutorial uh, but in the future we are going to use JavaScript to program right so that uh, whenever the user enters you know picks the letters we're going to show those letters and then once um, he or she hits the enter key uh, we are going to basically check each letter compare them to letters in you know the correct word and then identify which ones are correct which ones um matches 
and then which ones are actually incorrect okay and color them accordingly but in that JavaScript program what we'll do is that if something is correct we are going to assign the correct class right such as a P here if something is a match but not in the correct spot then we are going to assign the match class to it to change the color because the styles are already in CSS and so we can directly reuse those even when we are, are programming in JavaScript so in that case we can combine HTML CSS and JavaScript together to create an, uh, an interactive and, and, and hopefully engaging uh, user experience okay so for today i will stop here uh, for now and then um, we'll um, look forward uh, to the next video where we can do more uh, you know uh, you know uh, fun uh, stuff and 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 hopefully do all of this dynamically with some more programming see you in the next video bye for now